Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. A commoner is given one chance to survive. He tries to fight for his life, but he is just mocked for using his pitiful magic. In this world, lineage, talent, and diligence are the most important things to be a mage. Unfortunately for our protagonist, no amount of diligence can make up for a lack of talent. The guy in charge tells him that magic will never smile upon him, and he uses real magic to eliminate the poor guy. As his body gets roasted, our protagonist loves magic so much that he calls the spell used to end his life magnificent. He admires the magic that can be used by a noble, and he calls it beautiful. His one wish would be to have learned more about magic, even if he couldn't use it effectively. The poor magic lover dies, but wakes up soon after. He finds that he is surrounded by giants, and tries to defend himself with the fireball, but his hands are tiny. Surprisingly, his fireball attack works. Outside, a huge celebration is held, as it is announced that the Salem Kingdom's seventh prince has been born. Our protagonist has been reborn as Prince Lloyd, and everyone is in shock when they see how much damage the little baby's fireball did. Years later, Floyd has grown up a bit, and he hides from his maids. He is asked to go on a raid, but our boy is too busy trying to escape from these maids. The knights decide to just let him be, since unfortunately for Lloyd, he is much younger than his brothers, so that puts him out of contention for the crown. One of the knights doesn't think that gaining the kid's favor would be worth the effort, but the other knight explains just how wrong he is. Floyd is amazing since he could speak shortly after birth. He was reading spell books instead of picture books. Also, like a true gentleman, Lloyd refused to drink milk from the source. Most importantly though, this guy thinks that Lloyd might be the reincarnation of the great mage known as William Bardot. William is known as the father of sorcery, so this just sounds ridiculous. Lloyd confirms that he was reborn, but he was actually just a commoner in his past life. He has no clue why he was reborn, or why he was so lucky to become a privileged seventh son of a royal family. Floyd doesn't actually care about standing or glory, and he's just following the same philosophy he had in his past life. Finding out how much awesome magic can be discovered in the world is all Floyd cares about. His new life comes with a huge library for the little nerd to enjoy, but Sylpha the maid stops him. The two immediately start sparring, but Lloyd doubts that he needs to learn the way of the sword because he has no shot at the throne anyway. Sylpha is quick to point out that there is more to life than royal succession. She was put in charge of Lloyd's education three years ago, and it has become her life purpose to teach Lloyd everything he needs to know, and that includes sword fighting. Lloyd realizes that the practice won't end unless he puts on a good showing, so Floyd attacks with more force. Sylpha is pleased to see that he's getting stronger every day, but Lloyd thinks about how she always holds back. Floyd is a magical genius, as he reveals to us that he's using control type magic to trace all of Sylpha's moves. From her point of view, she's pretty much just fighting a mirror image of herself. The mischievous little nerd thinks about how he's really just cheating, so he can go back to reading. The two continue fighting for now, and Lloyd acknowledges that Sylpha has him beat in strength, stamina, and height. He is able to copy her techniques with magic, but those other things put him at a disadvantage, and usually he loses. Lloyd decides that this is the perfect time to use today's experiment. He will use the difference in their physical abilities and cheat just enough to compensate. Lloyd uses a physical enhancement and levitation spell on himself. The difference is noticeable, and Lloyd uses a combination of physical attacks and magic to fight more evenly now. The fighting intensifies, but Lloyd is a pretty confident kid. He has been fighting Sylpha as her mirror image perfectly, so he is sure that he can win if he makes one different move. Floyd releases his trace spell and surprises Sylpha with an unexpected move. He apologizes for having to end the fight, but thinks about how he has to get back to reading. Surprisingly, Sylpha blocks the attack, and what's even more shocking is that she knows he was cheating. She wipes the kid out and points out that the difference in his reach was too noticeable. He used levitation to make up for their difference in height, and he even grew his wooden sword. Her anger turns into admiration, and she is astounded to see that he could use two spells at once, as even the court's magicians find that to be really difficult. In reality, Lloyd was using four spells, as he thinks about how she didn't notice the physical enhancement and control magic. Her brain would probably explode if she found out that he could use four spells at once, so he decides to keep that a secret. Afterwards, Lloyd is forced to take a bath, even though all he wants to do is read. The maids warn him about spending too much time in the library, because the Forbidden Library's demon will appear to eat him alive. A long time ago, Salem was nearly destroyed. 
After the sacrifice of countless mages, the demon behind the attack was sealed away in a book, and its name is Grimoire. Sylpha is sure that Lloyd wouldn't be afraid of something like that, but he is trembling in fear. The girls argue about who will get to sleep with the scared kid, but Lloyd uses this opportunity to get away. It turns out that Lloyd isn't afraid of the demon, he is just excited to find this forbidden library that's somewhere in the castle's basement. That night, Lloyd uses wind magic to reflect the light around him, and he makes himself invisible. One guard tells the other to stay on his toes, since there is magic in the forbidden library that could shake the entire kingdom, not to mention that the sealed demon is also inside. This all sounds perfect to our adventurous protagonist, so he makes his way into the basement. The dumb guards are sure that no one can get past them, but even if someone did, ten mages cast their most powerful magic sealing spells on the entrance to create an unbreakable barrier. This is nothing for our boy though, so he easily breaks the barrier and is amazed by the forbidden library. Lloyd takes a peek at some of the books, but Grimmar reveals himself almost immediately. Lloyd introduces himself, so Grimmar wonders if the kid could be nice and break the seal. The seal has degraded over the years, so it's only a matter of time before it breaks anyway. Grimmar offers to give him endless amounts of gold, but he is shocked when Lloyd is able to tell that he was just using poor imitation magic. Grimmar is shocked by the kid's composure, as Lloyd explains that this kingdom is where he studies magic, so he can't let some dangerous demon destroy it. Grimmar points out that he doesn't hold any grudges to the people in this day and age, but Lloyd doesn't believe him. Grimmar makes another attempt to convince Lloyd, and offers to teach him some ancient magic, stuff that's been lost for hundreds of years. Grimmar is really speaking Lloyd's language now, as the kid gets really interested. Grimmar can tell that Lloyd has a lot of talent, and this makes Lloyd remember how he was told that magic would never smile upon him. Lloyd declares that he now has a more privileged body than a commoner, but Grimmar just wonders who talks this way about themselves. Lloyd lifts the seal and prepares to learn some ancient magic. The devious Grimmar just attacks him with an insanely powerful spell, and he wonders if this is enough of a lesson for Lloyd. With Lloyd eliminated, Grimmar wonders what his next move should be, but he is shocked when he realizes that Lloyd is still alive. He isn't just alive though, Lloyd is amazed by the unique attack, and he hopes that Grimmar can show him some more. Grimmar attacks furiously, but nothing he does can break the barrier. Grimmar is losing his mind to anger, but our boy Lloyd is super calm, and he uses his barrier to analyze all of Grimmar's attacks. This kid just can't help himself, as he wants to feel the attack, even at the risk of dying again. Grimmar is then absolutely stunned when Lloyd allows the magic to surround his finger. It's incredibly painful, but the magic obsessed Lloyd can still admire its beauty. Lloyd asks for more, so the enraged Grimmar uses some time to summon an even more powerful spell. Synchronizing two incantations for a spell at once is generally impossible, and it's a special type of casting, only usable by a demon capable of having two mouths. Grimoire is screaming his brains out to unleash the most powerful attack he can muster, but our boy Lloyd is just analyzing the attack. Grimoire is shocked when his most powerful magic couldn't even scratch the barrier, and Lloyd admires how much effort it must have taken to get so powerful. Grimoire decides to run away from this crazy kid, but he's stunned to see that Lloyd put up another barrier. Grimoire assumes that he created it to keep him from running, but Lloyd reveals that he made a mistake a long time ago, so he made sure to be more cautious about everything moving forward. Grimmar prepares to attack again, but Lloyd is done analyzing his attacks. Lloyd powers up a powerful spell of his own, and demands that Grimmar show him what he can do on defense. Lloyd unleashes a massive fire attack, and Grimmar wonders where all this mana is coming from. It's too late though as Lloyd's attack absolutely fries the demon. Lloyd points out that he didn't block the attack, but the demon just wonders who this crazy powerful kid is. Grimmar then bears witness as Lloyd restores the entire room after it had been blown to bits. Grimoire has never met such an amazing mage before, so he has started calling the kid Master Lloyd. Lloyd is amazed that Grimoire survived his attack, and this just makes the little psychopath curious about how much Grimoire will be able to survive. Grimoire doesn't want to feel the endless pain he would go through while Lloyd tests him, so he pledges himself to the kid. He offers to serve as his familiar, so Lloyd agrees. To not be found out, Grimoire transforms into the cutest animal he can, but he thinks about what he's really doing. He's using this cute exterior in the hopes that Lloyd will eventually let his guard down so he can get the drop on him. Lloyd tells the demon to get in his pocket, but Grimoire thinks about how that's a foolish decision. It works for him though since if he gets that close to Lloyd, Grimoire is sure that he'll be able to control his mind and take over his body. 
Grimoire hops on, but he is stunned when he feels Lloyd's mana. Grimoire can't understand how it can be so dense, and he realizes that he won't be able to control a single finger on this monster. Grimoire doesn't think Lloyd is human, and he trembles in fear. Lloyd wonders if he's just cold, and Grimoire completely changes his tune to tell Lloyd that he can just call him Grim. Grimoire decides to be obedient for the time being, and Lloyd happily runs off to start doing some reading. Sometime later we watch as the noble prepares for his day and makes his way through the mansion. In the library, Grim warns Lloyd that someone is approaching. Lloyd tells him to hide, and we learn that this noble is Prince Albert. Albert gives a demonstration of his power and amazes everyone when he's able to hit a target perfectly with his magic. Albert is the second prince of the Salem Kingdom. He excels at everything so much that everyone believes he will be the one chosen to be the next king. Albert has permission to access facilities like this one, and sometimes he invites Lloyd to come along. Lloyd is not able to use much of his magic in the castle, so he appreciates it when Albert invites him to the range. Lloyd is up next to give a demonstration, but he's not interested in the throne. Therefore, he does not need to impress anyone. Besides that, if he showed his true power, he would be forced to get involved in the power struggle between princes. Lloyd hates that idea since all he wants to do is research sorcery in peace. Grim wonders what he will do about the demonstration, so Lloyd explains that he will simply make his fireball curve so that they only graze the targets. Lloyd says it so simply, but Grim thinks that takes even more skill than just hitting the targets. Lloyd fires away and just barely grazes each one. Spectators are disappointed about it, but Grim thinks about how they should have realized how impossibly difficult it is to control magic so accurately. The magic-loving Lloyd doesn't pay them any attention, and just thinks about how he could improve his technique even more. Albert seems like he might know something, but he doesn't mention anything, and just says that Lloyd can stay while he takes a break. Lloyd couldn't be any happier, as there are so many things he wants to try. Lloyd wants to start by trying the dual incantation that Grimm did, but Grimm frantically tells him that it's impossible. That is an ability unique to demons that can form extra mouths. Lloyd thinks that he might have a solution though. He surprises himself when his idea works, but Grimm is shocked and points out that no sane person would ever try incorporating a demon into their own body. Well, that's exactly what Lloyd did, so he tells Grimm to try and cast an infernal fireball. Grimm declares that this will be a piece of cake for a demon of his caliber, but he freaks out when things don't go the way he planned. Grimm is terrified and wonders what Lloyd did. Lloyd explains that it was just a spell stack, a technique for compressing incantations. By reciting several incantations at once, Lloyd is able to shorten the time to cast a spell. Lloyd has taken this to an extreme level, as he casually says that he was just reciting about a hundred spells in each line of the incantation. Grimm is stunned at how casual he is being, and points out that even as a powerful demon, he can only stack two or three lines at once. Lloyd does his next test, and finds that he can now talk out of both mouths. Grimm panics as he fears that Lloyd is going to recite two advanced spells at once, but Lloyd just silences him. An immense power begins to flow through him as Lloyd uses the Infernal Fireball and Water Bolt spell. Grimm's panic reaches an all-time high as he realizes that Lloyd is weaving two incredibly advanced spells together. The mana is intensifying to incredible levels, and Lloyd couldn't be more excited to see what kind of power Dual Incantation brings. Lloyd realizes that he can't release the power on the ground, so he simply sends it into the sky. This still results in a display of power that can be seen from far away. In the castle, some servants wish that Albert wouldn't spend his time with Lloyd, since Lloyd is just a kid and he isn't very good at magic. Albert tells them that they are just blind. He reveals that Lloyd was able to graze all the targets perfectly in the exact same way. He did it on purpose, so Albert calls Lloyd a genius. Albert predicts that Lloyd could even become the Grand Sage, and hopes that he will be his ally. The servants are sure that he will be able to convince him, but Albert points out that he just wants to get along with his little brother. Albert predicts that Lloyd probably already knocked down all the targets, but the servants once again doubt Lloyd's ability. They think that knocking down the targets so fast would be impossible for the kid, and the servant wonders why it's so dark outside. We see why as Grimm shakes in fear after seeing that Lloyd blew a hole right through the atmosphere. Lloyd panics as he doesn't want anyone to find out, but luckily things go back to normal. This was a pretty crazy event, so the terrified Grimm once again wonders just who the heck Lloyd is. The next morning, Grimm gets fed up with doing a bunch of maid duties for Lloyd. 
He calms down though and reminds himself that he must make sure that Lloyd has a clean and healthy lifestyle in preparation for when he takes over his body. Later, the tear in the sky makes it into the newspaper, but no one knows what caused it. Lloyd might have some serious ADHD though, as he has already moved on. He is now more interested in a new story about high-ranking adventurers. They cleared a high-difficulty dungeon and returned with precious treasures and magical items. This sounds super fun to Lloyd, so he decides to go to a dungeon. Grim points out that Lloyd will cause a mass panic if it's found out that he's gone, but Lloyd reveals that he has a solution. Grim is then confused when Lloyd brings out an acorn. His confusion turns into amazement when Lloyd uses it to create a wooden replica of himself. It's actually a pretty complex replica as Lloyd gave it nerves among other things. That way it not only looks like him, but it can also do simple movements on its own. This still isn't enough, as Lloyd points out that he would have done this sooner if it was sure to work. Unfortunately, it is not, since the real problem is Silpha. A look back shows just how much she obsesses over Lloyd, as she noticed that he grew a quarter of a millimeter taller. This silly dancing dummy he just created won't be enough to fool her, but Lloyd has a new solution for that too. He heads outside and we see that he left Grimm in control of the replica, while still being able to communicate with him through his hand. The maids adore how cute he is, but Grimm thinks about how crazy Lloyd is. Lloyd transferred Grimm's soul into the replica and incorporated his soulless body into his hand. Lloyd leaves the rest to Grimm, and Grimm admires how real the replica feels. Soon he realizes that Lloyd isn't there to stop him, and he gets some devious ideas in his mind. Just then, Lloyd tells him that he really enjoys having Grimm as his familiar, and this brings tears to his eyes. Lloyd wonders if something is wrong, but Grimm just tells him to just hurry up and finish with the dungeon. Lloyd realizes that he doesn't know where to find a dungeon, and Grimm notices that it looks like someone is being attacked nearby. This isn't the case though, as the seemingly helpless girl turns on her pursuers, and she absolutely destroys them. She demonstrates her amazing fighting abilities, and Grimm points out that she must be a martial artist. Lloyd has read about the breathing technique she is using. It allows a person to put an energy called Ki into their body, granting them extreme strength. The girl is able to spot them somehow, but that's okay with Lloyd since he wants to learn more about her technique. He begins to panic though, when Grimm points out that she might recognize him as the seventh prince. His silence makes the girls think that he is an enemy, so the guys panic as he makes her way to them. Luckily, Lloyd manages to change his appearance just in time and introduces himself as Loberto. Lloyd used a spell that allows him to transform into someone he has seen before. He used the newly learned dual incantation to combine his appearance with Albert's to create an original look. The girl introduces herself as Tao, and Lloyd worries that she might suspect something since she isn't turning around. It turns out that Tao is actually panicking because she thinks Loberto is a hottie. Tao has spent all 18 years of her life training. She eventually escaped the dojo and became an adventurer in search of romance. Unfortunately for her, this hasn't worked out since most guys prefer frail priestesses. Her time has finally come though, so she vows to make Loberto her boyfriend. She looks pretty busy, so Lloyd decides not to ask her to clear a dungeon with him, but she jumps at the chance. When they enter a dungeon, Tao is eager to show him her fighting prowess, but our boy Lloyd is too busy obsessing over some glowing rocks. Tao is impressed by how much Lloyd knows about her breathing technique, and she explains that learning about Ki begins and ends with breathing. Proper breathing fills your whole body with Ki, and it allows a person to release a burst of superhuman strength. The problem is that it takes a lot of training to even start sensing the Ki in one's body. That is why Tao recommends that Loberto spend his time finding the Ki to her heart instead. Lloyd completely ignores the corny joke, and he shocks Tao when he's able to use a breathing technique. He explains that he just copied her, but she warns that if he's not used to it, he will feel like his lungs are burning. Lloyd is just as crazy as always though, and just keeps doing the technique. He surprises himself when he's able to feel the energy inside of him, and becomes excited when he realizes that he will be able to apply this power to sorcery. Tao decides that she will help him learn about Ki, and instructs him not to stop the breathing technique until they leave the dungeon. Back home, Grim thinks Lloyd is crazy because he has such a comfortable life, but he doesn't care for it. All he cares about is learning more about sorcery. Things are going pretty smoothly for Grim, but he is shocked when Silpha makes an appearance. Back in the dungeon, Tao shows Lobert to a Ki Blast and uses it to defeat the dungeon boss. They are rewarded with a chest 
but Tao explains that a dungeon that hasn't grown much won't have any good loot. As they look at the chest, Tao is amazed to see that Loberto has already learned the key breathing technique in such a short period of time. Tao realizes that she just hit the jackpot. If she can manage to get Loberto into a student-teacher affair, then her caretaker will have no choice but to accept him as her fiancé. Tao goes to open the chest, but Lloyd must rescue her as it had a deadly trap. A lich emerges from the chest, and Lloyd wonders if this is the real boss of the dungeon. Tao acts like this lich isn't a big deal, so she tells Loberto to leave the dungeon while she takes care of it, but he would like to watch her fight. The situation is actually much worse than Tao is making it seem, so she apologizes to her boy and forces him out of the dungeon. She acknowledges that she might have broken a few of his bones, but that's better than him losing his life to the lich. Tao dodges the lich's attacks, but she thinks about how even A-ranked adventurers are no match for a lich. She isn't foolish enough to think that she can defeat it, so she decides to just buy enough time for Loberto to escape. Elsewhere, Lloyd is still flying from Tao launching him, but he's disappointed since there was a lot more he wanted to learn. Lloyd stops himself and wonders if he should go back. He is torn because he doesn't know why she sent him out of the dungeon, so he asks Grimm for advice. Grimm isn't responding, but when he does, he just tells Lloyd to come home and save him. Back at the fight, things aren't looking so good for Tao, as she realizes that her life is about to end. She tries to back away, but she is shocked when the Lich begins to speak. He explains that he eats the souls of adventurers to gain their wisdom and skills. He determines that Tao isn't worth eating because her key technique just boils down to low-level magic. However, he is interested in Lloyd because of how quickly he reacted to the trap. Tao points out that the Lich and Loberto are nothing alike. Most people treat key techniques like a waste of time, but Loberto said he was impressed by it. The Lich couldn't care less, so Tao attacks him. A barrier protects the Lich, but Tao attacks it furiously while explaining that she has trained to use key techniques since she was 5 years old. Tao really shows just how angry she is, as she points out that she spent all her time training, so she never had the time to find a boyfriend. Her barrage of attacks ends with one final devastating blow, and she declares that all her frustration is why she shouldn't be messed with. Tao has used too much of her key, so she can't even move an inch anymore so things get really bad for her when the Lich reveals that he is still alive. Tao used a full power key blast to destroy the barrier, but the Lich reveals that it was pitiful. The full extent of her power is weaker than even just a single finger's worth of his magic. The Lich adds insult to injury as he points out that she just wasted her life with all that training. He uses a spell to crush her with a magic shard, but the Lich is shocked when Lloyd rescues her. Lloyd explains that he will be taking over, but he doesn't have much time, so he will have to end the fight quickly. Tao has no clue what's going on, as she asks Loberto what he's doing there, but she sees that he has gotten very serious. Lloyd instantly flies behind the Lich, and Tao is shocked to see him use the breathing technique. The Lich is just as surprised, but it's because Lloyd used an air class spell called Full Sprint that should be impossible to do without an incantation. The Lich attacks him, but he's in disbelief at how strong Lloyd's barrier is. Lloyd doesn't even seem interested in this monster, as he is really just focusing on perfecting the combination of Ki and Mana. He hasn't achieved it yet, but he remembers how Tao told him to focus. Lloyd takes in even more air into his lungs as he focuses, and he speeds up that full sprint spell. The Lich thinks Lloyd is trying to get away, so he attacks him, but Lloyd is actually just breathing in more air. His barrier is getting in the way, so Lloyd just gets rid of it, but the Lich thinks he was able to shatter it. The dumb Lich thinks he has the upper hand, so he goes in for the final blow, but Lloyd dodges it all. Tao is shocked as she realizes that the Lich's attack didn't break the barrier. Loberto did it himself, so he could draw in even more air to use an even more powerful key technique. Lloyd continues to dodge attacks while also molding together his key and mana. Lloyd shocks everyone watching when he uses this new power, but Lloyd isn't satisfied with it. He makes a slight adjustment and laughs like a maniac as he unleashes a barrage of attacks on the Lich. The psychopath demands that the Lich not give up since he is having fun and there's a lot more stuff he wants to try out. The Lich can't comprehend what's going on as he thought that Lloyd was just a mage. The kid isn't using any incantations though, and Lloyd's simple key techniques are somehow matching the Lich's sorcery. The Lich takes some damage and realizes that Lloyd's techniques are actually overpowering him. Lloyd sharpens his attack even more, so the Lich prepares to defend against it with the barrier, but it's no use. 
The attack slices right through the barrier and the lich, so Tao watches in amazement as Lloyd declares that he was able to figure it out. Afterwards, Tao is disappointed to see that they just got some old dagger for all their hard work, but Lloyd can tell that it's been bathed in mana. She still doesn't think that it's that great, so she lets Lloyd have it. Just then, Lloyd is startled when the ground begins to collapse, but Tao explains that dungeons fall apart after the boss is defeated and the treasure is taken. Lloyd is amazed as he thinks it's like a survival technique used by lizards who sacrifice their tails so they can survive. He realizes that the dungeons lie dormant in the ground until someone drops a magic item. The dungeon absorbs the item and slowly builds an actual dungeon around it. It then collects gear left by those that failed to clear it. Then when it senses that it's about to be cleared, it offers up one of the items it collected so it can survive. It's all so fascinating to him, but they're running out of time. Lloyd manages to pull the chest from the ground and they escape just before the dungeon collapses. Lloyd marvels at the closed dungeon as it gathers its strength underground until it's able to become a dungeon again. Tao acknowledges that Loberto is an amazing mage, but she wonders why he chose to use a key technique at the end of the battle. She questions if it was for her sake since the lich was mocking her. Unfortunately for her, Lloyd reveals that he just used it for fun. Just then, Lloyd prepares to leave as he remembers that he needs to rush home. Tao thinks about how the key technique Lloyd used is so advanced that she can't even use it, so she declares that she will train hard to become a fascinating girl for the next time they meet. Lloyd says that he will train hard too as he leaves, and Tao hopes to become the kind of girl who can catch his attention. Just then, she remembers that she doesn't know how to contact him, but it's too late. Lloyd arrives home, shocked to see Grimm in bad shape. Silpha took the fake Lloyd for training, but she was startled by how weak he had become, so she vowed to make him strong again. Grimm now sobs as he didn't stand a chance at making it through the training. Grimm is disappointed to see that Lloyd spent so much time away just for a crappy sword, but Lloyd explains that it's actually quite the treasure. He puts it in some hot water and scrapes it to reveal that it really was treated with mana essence. Mana essence is hard to come by and enchantment spells are difficult to do. Mana Essence is used to write magic formulas onto a weapon in order to strengthen it. However, if it fails, then both the essence and the weapon are wasted. Since Mana Essence is so hard to find, Lloyd decides to analyze the ones he scraped off the knife so they can make some themselves. He uses a purification spell to reveal its components, which end up being oil, silver, and something called Hamatide. Hamatide is made from powdering a monster's core, so it's pretty rare but they can make some from the dungeon chest. All that's left is oil and silver. Lloyd's father gives him some silver coins and he wonders what his son will buy with it. Lloyd and Grimm then head to their hideout where they melt the silver. Afterwards, Lloyd makes a bet with Silpha. If he manages to land an attack on her, then she will give him oil. Lloyd surprises her with some magic and prepares to win the bet, but he loses track of her. Silpha reveals herself and wins the fight. She kindly still gives him the oil, since she is just glad that he isn't as weak as the other day. Grimm spies on them, so he is insulted, because that was actually him that she is calling weak. She shouldn't have been able to beat him, even if he wasn't using magic, so he wonders just what kind of maid she is. Silpha then admires just how impressive Lloyd is at just 10 years old. He excels with the sword and with magic, so she predicts that he could become Knight Commander when he grows up. Lloyd just thanks her for the oil, and she wonders what he plans to cook with it. Lloyd and Grimm head back to their hideout to add the oil to their concoction, and they finish making the mana essence. Next up, he asks Albert for some weapons, so he can test his enhancement magic. Albert thinks it's adorable how much Lloyd loves magic, so he asks his troops which one of them wants his adorable little brother to strengthen their weapon. They all eagerly offer their swords, but they only do it because Albert practically ordered them to. In reality, they're not too excited about it, since enchantment is so difficult that it rarely goes well. Even worse, Lloyd is just 10 years old, so the guys assume that he will just end up breaking all their weapons. Grimm listens to how much they are doubting Lloyd, and he gets really upset. We then watch as Grimm assists Lloyd, and angrily declares that they're going to enchant the heck out of the weapons and make them unstoppable. Lloyd then uses what they made to write the enchantment called Boost Power. Lloyd acts like a mad scientist, and Grimm is shocked as Lloyd is applying three layers of boost power. This kid is a lunatic, as he's filling every tiny spot he can find with spell formulas. Of course, the sword breaks as the steel it's made from couldn't withstand the spells he was adding to it. 
Lloyd realizes that enchanting is really hard, but Grimm encourages him to keep trying. After several failures, Lloyd finally manages to get the hang of it. Afterwards, Lloyd returns to Albert with 50 of the 120 swords he was given. He apologizes for breaking 70 of them, but in reality he thinks about how he actually succeeded in enchanting 80 of them. The problem was that he tried to add even more spells to a few and ended up destroying them. Albert is in absolute disbelief since even a first-rate enchanter only has a success rate of around 10%. It's so unbelievable that the troops don't think he was able to enchant the weapons at all. They just assume that he quit after ruining 70 weapons and is now returning the rest unenchanted. The soldiers decide to lie and say that the swords feel sharper, but one is surprised when his sheath gets sliced in half by his sword. They don't really know what to make of it, but the angry little Grimm feels vindicated. Albert is amazed by one of the more impressive swords, and Lloyd explains that he was hoping to see them use the weapons in battle. This is actually perfect timing, as Albert reveals that they are going on a monster hunt. Soon after, we see that Lloyd is accompanying Albert. Lloyd of course has Grimm with him, and they arrive at the forest where they will have their monster hunt. The monster isn't in the woods though, it is by a nearby lake. Lloyd is extremely excited, since it's not often that he's allowed to leave the castle, and he also really wants to see his enchanted swords in action. Albert points out how Sylpha never leaves Lloyd's side, and she thanks him for allowing her to come with. Albert says it was only right, since Sylpha is Lloyd's teacher and bodyguard. He teases her by implying that her feelings for Lloyd might be too strong, but Sylpha silences him with a threat. Just then, they are surrounded by kobolds, but the soldiers consider this to be a warm-up for the monster. Lloyd pretends to be scared, but Grimm knows that Lloyd sensed the threat a long time ago. One of the key techniques Tao taught him is called spectral detection. By using key breathing, Lloyd is now able to sense his surroundings at all times. Grimm watches his master and thinks about how Lloyd always has spectral detection and his barrier active. Surprising him is impossible, so Grimm states that Lloyd gets scarier with every passing day. The fight begins and everyone involved is shocked by how sharp the swords are. It's not just slicing through the monsters, it's cutting through steel equipment like it's butter. Soldiers are freaking out like children with their hands on a knife for the first time, so Lloyd decides that his enchantments were a success. Albert thinks so as well, and he tells everyone that his little brother is an enchanting prodigy. Sylpha agrees as she stands over a pile of monster corpses, but Lloyd points out that he didn't even enchant her sword. Just then, one kobold tries to attack Lloyd, but Tao appears out of nowhere to take it out. Lloyd almost messes up by calling out to her like he's still Oberto, but he stops himself just in time. Tao noticed that Lloyd was using key breathing techniques, but she came because she thought she sensed Loberto. Upon closer look, she also sees a lot of resemblance between Loberto and Lloyd. Just then, Sylpha eliminates another monster. She commends Tao for her assistance, but threatens her not to be so forward with Prince Lloyd. Tao points out that she sensed that monster coming, and key techniques are not to be underestimated. Tensions rise between these two, so Albert calms them down and invites Tao to join them. That night, Tao is shocked to learn that Albert is a prince. Albert looks like Loberto too, but not as much as Lloyd, who she is looking for now. Lloyd hides nearby and realizes that Tao's proficiency with Ki has made her really sensitive to it. He was using spectral detection, and that must be how she found him. Lloyd decides to hide in his tent, but for some reason, Sulfa was in there changing. Lloyd says that he doesn't need her to protect him, but Sylpha disagrees as she doesn't like how the new girl is chasing after him. Tao barges in on them, so Sylpha calls her an idiot, and Tao calls Sylpha a perverted maid. The two argue, so Lloyd uses this moment to get away. Albert calls Lloyd a lady killer, and points out that Sylpha has changed a lot since she started looking after Lloyd. She sees a lot of maturity in Lloyd, but Albert warns that relationships with women can be complicated. Just then, the girls notice that the soldiers are watching them a little too closely. They knock them all out, so Lloyd hears Albert's message loud and clear. Tao explains that she was hired to clean up an old shrine, so Sifa tells her to hurry along. They almost start arguing again, but Albert interrupts and says that Tao's ability to sense danger is very helpful. He would like for her to act as a lookout for them overnight, but she points out that they won't need one, as the monster has arrived. The monster is a bear wolf, so Sylpha tells Lloyd to stay behind her. The monster begins attacking, and Lloyd points out how bear wolves are incredibly fast for how large they are. 
Lloyd tries talking to Grimm, but the little guy is distracted as he seems to recognize the shrine. Tao manages to save some soldiers, but this monster is really tough. Albert has had enough, so he draws his sword. He apologizes to the wolf, but explains that local villagers are suffering because of it. Albert uses his sword while reciting an incantation, and he releases an incredibly powerful attack that destroys the monster. Everyone is amazed that he took it out with just one attack, but Albert points out that his attack is not normally that powerful. It was only possible because of the enchantment that Lloyd applied to his spellbound sword. Lloyd thinks about how he added a little extra to Albert's sword, but Grimm isn't even paying attention. He is extremely worried and reveals that there is a demon sealed in the shrine nearby. Just then, everyone is shocked as the bear wolf is somehow still able to move. Other monsters appear out of nowhere and a voice begins speaking to our group. It is upset that they harmed one of his minions. The voice reveals itself from within the bear wolf and introduces himself as the demon Pazuzu. He vows that they will pay with their lives and he sends his minions to attack. They are easy enough to slice up, but the problem is that they can instantly heal. Tao rescues Albert and he has determined that the demon is controlling all the minions. Lloyd wonders if this demon is an acquaintance of Grimm's, but it's not. Grimm explains that Pazuzu is able to transmute his mana in order to control the monsters. This makes the monsters think that he is their master, but in reality his mana just acts like strings to control them as puppets. He can also supply mana through the strings, which is why the monsters are able to regenerate. Grimm very seriously declares that things will get bad if Pazuzu is not taken down. However, Lloyd doesn't really care and just wants Grimm to teach him mana transmutation. Silpha wishes Tao would hurry up and do something, but Tao points out that Silpha isn't doing anything. Grimm tells Lloyd that this isn't the best time to try and learn something since the others are really fighting for their lives. Lloyd is sure that they will be fine though and insists that Grimm teach him. As Pazuzu watches the fight, he points out while some of his opponents have skill, most of them are only surviving because of their weapons. Pazuzu then begins to insult Lloyd by saying that he ran away like a scared baby. Sofa is clearly not liking what he is saying, so he tells her that it must be a lot of work for her to look after a pathetic waste of flesh like Lloyd. This clearly pushes Sofa over the edge, and Tao is terrified of her when she notices. Sofa excuses herself from Lloyd's side, but he doesn't care as he's still busy learning stuff. Pazuzu keeps trash talking, but Sofa starts firing back. She says that all the minions smell really bad, and the only thing worse is Pazuzu's breath. She has decided that Pazuzu is interfering with Lloyd's fresh air, so she must end his life. Sofa casually draws her sword, but Pazuzu explains that they have no chance of leaving alive. He is supplying the minions with mana, so they will continue to regenerate with no end. Demons have no shortage of mana, so he won't run out either. Pazuzu thinks that he made Sofa cry, but she once again says that it's his breath. Just then, Albert gets worried when the demon attacks her, but she is more than okay because she cut off all the monster's feet. She suggests that he leave the furball he's controlling behind and warns that he will lose faster if he doesn't. Just then, everyone notices that the minions have stopped moving and they are regenerating slower. This is because the demon is focused on regenerating its own bear wolf. They might have a chance to win whenever the demon does this, so Albert tells Sofa to keep injuring him. She prepares to do so, but Pazuzu thinks they are just foolish. Nearby, Grimm finishes giving his lesson to Lloyd. He explains that Pazuzu must have a serious knack for mana transmutation since it's not easy to do, even for a powerful demon. Grimm tries to give a demonstration on mana control and explains that a good place to start is by adding color to it. After that comes shaping and adding sense. Grimm even struggles with it, but he is shocked when Lloyd reveals that he shaped his mana into a flower and even added a scent. Grimm can't believe that he made it so perfectly already, and they both take a moment to enjoy the smell. Meanwhile, Pazuzu is in great distress as Sofa is giving him a beatdown. He can't figure out how she leaves no openings, and he wonders how someone like her could be a mere babysitter. Sofa borrows one of the soldier's swords and admires it because it was enchanted by Lloyd. Her obsession with Lloyd has made Pazuzu become interested in him, so he declares that he wants to dissect him. The demon shows off his immense speed, but he continues to insult Lloyd, which just makes Sofa even angrier. The demon consumes her and mocks her for being a stupid human that fell for his provocation. He is stunned though when Sofa is still alive and she slices the wolf bear's body in half. 
She declares that this is her family's dual blade art and follows it up with another called Diving Sparrow. This slices the monster's head right off, so Pazuzu tries to point out that she is just a maid. Unfortunately for him, this isn't true, so Silva uses another art to completely destroy the wolf and expose the demon. Everyone is absolutely stunned by her power, and Lloyd realizes that this is what Silva looks like when she gets serious. He admires her and memorizes this moment by shaping his mana into her. Silva is sickened by the thought of the demon trying to hurt Lloyd, so she declares that the only thing he is fit to touch is her blade. Thanks for watching my recap, sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel, link is in the description.